to our live webinar today. The weather is getting better outside and you're still here today with us. Um, we're looking forward to the webinar and a special welcome to our speakers today. First one is Elle, my colleague Sebastian and Carsten Wendler from the Lego Group. Welcome and uh, thank you for your time today and sharing your knowledge. Um, Brief to my person, um, maybe you know me from the last webinars, the last uh, three years, but um, yeah, my name is Maike and I'm responsible for all the marketing activities at the CSA and I'm here today for your support if you have questions um, about the tool or regarding the webinar content. Um, just ask your questions, send them to me and, we'll, and I will be happy to answer your questions. Um, of course, um, we want to give you some facts about the CSA uh, if you don't know us. Um, our goal is to increase the quality of commercial emailing. We act as a neutral interface between mailbox providers and senders of commercial emailing and create, enable quality and of course legal technical um, standards with our partners and of course our CSA certified senders. All these steps ends in our certification that we can offer for you. If you want to get more information about um, how we can support you in our daily work, just contact us after the webinar and we will get back to you and give you everything you need to know about the CSA. And um, yeah, we have official partners. It's the Martian, Harlon and Kickbox. Thank you all for your support during the year doing the live webinars. And if you want to get more information about one of them, two or all of them, just download the partner booklet. It might be in the control panel on the right on your screen. Download it, contact them and get the information you need to know about our partners. And of course, we need to have some housekeeping words. Um, you're muted during the whole webinar, but of course you can ask your questions. We have two options for you today. Um, you can use the control panel, ask your question, submit them to me or Sebastian, and we will read the questions out loud. Um, and the second one is, raise your hand, ask your question live, and um, get the answer directly. Hopefully you use this function, but it's up to you which one you want to use, and um, feel free to use both of them. Of course, we want to know what you think about the webinar, about the topic, about our speakers, or maybe you have another idea for a webinar. Share your key facts, learnings, or takeaways on social media. Tag us, use our hashtag, and yeah, let us know what you think about the webinar today. And I think that's, first of all, all from my side. Um, I will hand over to Al and the other one. Are you here? Just wait, I can't hear you all. No, Hello. I should. No, no, it works. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hello. That sounds good. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> so. that, that sounds like the plan. Thanks for the intro uh, and the housekeeping, Maike. Um, yeah, I think we, we will still need you in the background of that uh, webinar, but first of all, L. Carsten, welcome. Uh, great. And here again, a coffee talk from CSA side. I've got a big mug with me <laughs> and cold hands and a hot coffee. Um, yeah, let's start. Maybe not everyone on the attendance list uh, may know you. L. Carsten, would you give it a try and just introduce yourself quickly? Sure. Um, I'm Al Iverson. I am a product manager for a company called Kickbox. Uh, what we do is deliverability tools, uh, email verification, deliverability consulting, monitoring for block list issues and inbox problems and so forth. Um, I've been doing deliverability for 25 odd years. Feels like a long time. So that's what I do. Yeah, cool. Me, I am uh, Carsten. I work currently at the legal group. I'm the administrator of our mail uh, system there. I'm also a SME or system um, service man. No, I don't know what it is, what it says, but I should be an expert on DMARC and mail security. Uh, and uh, that's why they hired me. I have, 
I live in 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 Denmark uh, uh, on the small island called Funen, where I also had my uh, former jobs in in Odense Commune. So I've been the official, uh, what you call it, the city council uh, employee too. So I've I known both sides, the private sector and the official sector. So all with mail. Cool stuff. I can 100% confirm you are an expert. The first reason, and, and this is the reason why I asked you to join that. L, I mean, L is everywhere on the web. L is well known in the email ecosystem. And uh, I got to know you as the expert. And um, just quick, two quick words uh, to me, to the ones who don't know me. Um, I'm leading the technical department of the CSA, the Certified Centers Alliance. And um, Michael already did the introduction of CCSA, and I'm the one responsible for the technology, for all the services, for all the tools, um, for all the consulting that we provide to our certified senders. And um, to give you a little intro, why we're sitting here together as the three experts and talking about, again, about DMARC and BIMI. The initial anecdote about that was Carsten called me out. I was, or someone of our team was, ref, uh, was, was, was talking about DMARC the other day on a conference, and he called us out on LinkedIn and said, hey guys, your DMARC setup started, but you're not done yet. How can you talk about it when you're not done? And he's 100% right. So I took on my personal challenge about DMARC and Beanie. Um, So a little different than just talking about it over years, making it and, and running through that process themselves is a totally different story. And that made me up and brought me up with the idea to say, okay, Carsten, I called you out this time. Let's have a relaxed talk about Bimi and DMARC and El Sorry. You are one of the most famous faces when I would go to and need some facts and figures and, and dates and knowledge about DMARC and Bimi. Um, so um, that's why I'm happy to have you both guys here. What's the goal of that call, or of that webinar, sorry? Um, the goal should be, apart from all the publicly available tools and guidelines and blog posts and all that kind of stuff, to get a little bit of personal experience, um, what's going on under the hood? So what have been the challenges that for example, maybe no one talked so far um, while setting up DMARC. And hopefully we can provide a few additional answers and benefits to all the stuff that we know already from the general uh, um, communication about DMARC and BIMI. And um, first of all, to start with, I would love to ask the attendees group, and Michael, please, can you run that small poll for us? Um, we would love to know how many of you already adopted DMARC. Please, can you help us? Let us know, um, have you already adopted DMARC? Yes, no, or you don't know. And this would give us the intro into some facts and figures. So hopefully there are already a few folks out there who did the DMARC setup. What's the result? Can you let us? Okay, look at that. So there's definitely the expectation to get to know more than the general stuff. I hope we can fulfill that. Um, thank you very much, Micah. L, what is the state of DMARC and BIMI? I mean, we've talking about it over years already. What is the current status? I know you've got something with you. Um, I think you can present as well your shards if you want to. You should have presenter rights. All right, here we go. Oh no, it's making me open system settings. So maybe we'll have to talk about it instead of sharing. Okay. Um, unless you can share from your side if you have the uh, document open. Give me a second, that should be possible. I am so sorry. This is what happens when your guy doesn't show up for the run through call. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. I feel bad for these guys. I blew. I totally missed our run through call a little bit ago. I thought, oh, we've done 100 of these webinars. It will be totally fine. Well, not on this computer. If I Let flip me. the switch, it'll knock me out of it. 
but I will talk it. We will talk about numbers because uh, I do have a lot of numbers to talk about uh, DMARC and how that all works. Um, I took something interesting. I wanted to know um, of the uh, perfect there. If you want to go to slide three, we'll start there. Just a couple yes. of slides here. We won't we won't spend hours in here. But this uh, one, right? Yes, perfect. So um, I took right. the uh, top 10 million domains. What that means is there's various ways you can compile what that means. And I really didn't do it myself. I rely on uh, other people there for, for, they're probably looking at web traffic. It's not really email traffic. So it's not in an exactly perfect measure. But if you want a snapshot, sort of a, a random snapshot of, of domains that somebody else thinks are important, a list like this is a good starting point. So I use these top 10 uh, million domain lists a lot to categorize where mail is hosted, what the policies of certain domains are and so forth. And DMARC um, is a perfect thing to measure from that. So um, I, I wish I had started doing this a year ago so I could show you month over month. But um, going forward, I am going to track this so we can look at time and watch that adoption grow with a similar data set <coughs> excuse me, from month to month. So from that top, telling, top 10 million domains, looking to see what percentage of people have implemented DMARC, that's about 11% of those or just over 1.1 million uh, domain owners have implemented DMARC specifically. Uh, now the policy varies, you know, good 60 plus percent, uh, just about 60 plus percent, just about 60 percent of those are none as their policies. They're not specifying anything other than please send me reports about what you see. They're not doing quarantine, they're not doing reject, no sort of sort of harsh, active, restrictive, more secure DMARC policy. Um, which means now on top of that, I want to I wanted to look at BIMI as well. BIMI is the brand indicators for message identification logo standard, um, and it is a it is a carrot to help induce specifically marketing centers to help drive them to implement DMARC because a prerequisite of uh, BIMI to be able to show the BIMI logo with your sense is that you have to implement not only DMARC but a, a secure DMARC policy like quarantine or reject. So of those that could possibly have done it, um, only about 1.14% of that top 10 million people, about 13,000, just under 14,000 domains of that top 10 million have implemented a BIMI logo. So there's a whole bunch of opportunity there where that means that 99 plus percent of people have not implemented BIMI. There's a couple ways to look at that too. Like, is that, oh, it's sad, it's not very good adoption, or I, I look at it differently than that. I go, that is pretty good adoption, considering this. The specification is barely uh, a couple years old. Uh, there, you know, there, it goes back a little bit longer where people were first talking about it, but nobody knew what it was. There, there was no sort of drive to implement it, and so almost 14,000 domain owners just from my sampling. So it's more than that, but again, this is of the top 10 million. Just uh, uh, almost 14,000 domain owners have implemented a BIMI logo. Oh. Now, just for fun, if you're a nerd about uh, the BIMI standard and you're aware of the verified mark certificate requirement um, that is required, it's, a, it's a, an additional cert, it's required by Gmail and Apple and a couple others. Um, very few people so far have implemented um, the VMC. Only about 10% of the people that have BIMI have gone this VMC route. Um, and I think that's a sign of newness. I think um, that's gonna grow over time because it was only quite recently that Apple came to the, the BIMI bandwagon, which greatly increased the chances that people will want to introduce BIMI. Gmail's been in there a little bit longer, but not much longer. So it still takes some time to get some adoption there. And I think we're really gonna see that grow. Looking for what to it. So that's definitely, that that totally differs to what we've saw, what we've seen on our poll. Um, I mean, we're talking to an expert group here as well. So that may be the, the, the issue. Um, I stop sharing and uh, yeah, thanks for that insights and that update. And um, I mean, you already said it, it may be a good chance to meet again one year and then looking at the benchmark, how it's, it's looking like in 24 uh, compared to today. Uh, so apart from, from, from numbers and, and, and figures, Kirsten, um, what does the DMARC set up or what do you, does DMARC mean for a large brand like the Lego Group? Um, 
why did you consider setting up um, a DMARC and what is the, the value for you behind it? What is your state of the of the current DMARC and BIMI setup? Well, <clears throat> we're fully employed. We are on reject on, on our on our main domains. Um, and as a company that sells products, have online communities, uh, especially for kids, uh, we need a lot of verifications because we do not want kids to make decisions that are used and should be take uh, made by grown ups or parents, uh, so to, so to speak. So we have a lot of mail traffic. We also have a lot of subdomains, uh, really large amount of subdomains. Um, that is utilized for that and now now we are getting very fast and quickly into to technicalities so i'll try to keep it short and sweet a company like ours we value our brand extremely much we we value us ourselves uh, so much as we compare us value wise internally on the level of Coca-Cola, Adidas, companies that are well known. I always use, when I got employed, that's only two years ago at Lego, uh, I had two job offers. One company was a very large shipping company. You may know it as Maersk Shipping. And the other one was Lego. My question in my head was, if I go to a coach somewhere way far away from Denmark, who will know one of these companies? And everybody would answer, everybody knows Lego. So large brand. And it, to me personally, this is very close to my heart. I grew up with Lego. So of course the choice wasn't a choice. I just had to say yes to Lego. But that also means I'm now in the area where I can help my colleague and my company by protecting our brand and that's actually what it comes down to you protect your brand not by protecting yourself so much as you are protecting the ones that receive mails from you because that's what dmac does it tells everybody out there that receives the mail let's use a, a very well-known company called google uh, you might them know, also know them as Gmail. If they receive a mail from us, I'm a customer, I have a phone uh, that is an Android, so I need a Google account to log into it. If I do not use that a mail account for anything other than that, that's okay. But some users actually use that email address. They can now be 100% sure if they receive a mail from Lego something something, then they can rely on coming from us. Mm -hmm. It may be a subsystem that we even have placed out in the cloud to send those mails, but we are in control of our brand, of our sending domains. That is at least the, the thing we are aiming for. And, and so for large companies, well-known companies, this is a vital part of their brand uh, manifestation out there uh, to keep off the head, uh, headlines in the newspapers, uh, especially the tabloids. Uh, keep off those, it's a main focus. Uh, and this is just one small brick in the whole wall of, of protecting our brands. Um, right. So, that makes total that makes total sense and um i remember the first the first call we had was exactly that discussion i mean you named them i mean to me lego is exactly on the same level like coca cola like adidas you named them and for those famous brands i mean that's a no brainer right there is value behind the brand name itself um yeah. there is an, a brand image that needs to be protected and I remember my question to you to say, hey, I mean, yes, the CSA may be known in a very small part of that whole ecosystem, but what is my role on it? Do I expect to be someone 
who will be a victim of email fraud or whatever. And I can exactly remember our discussion and you made up, or you, that there was one single point that, that, that convinced me to say, hey, um, I need to do it for the CSA as well. And the statement was, do you want to be the last open door in the whole network of security efforts that the spammer and the fraudster will find and they will find they, they will find the gap they are looking for gaps and they will find the gaps and for sure i don't want to be for sure the certified senders alliance does play another role we are a multiplier for best practices so i need to be the best be, best practice case in itself but other than that i don't want to be the last open hole for a fraudster to to trick the whole email email ecosystem right and so that made me thinking about that stuff. And I felt like a, like a total newcomer. I mean, I'm working in a business for 20 years right now as well. And I felt like a total newcomer doing that, do, doing that challenge. And um, there's um, a few things that, um, that I just wanna, wanna, wanna show with, to the audience. It's basically simple as that, that um, I ended up in my domain management, um, recommended by Carsten, doing my my homework, and uh, basically one important stuff that I figured out is every single small and tiny brand may think, mm, I don't have that much domains. What could it end up? Where is the issue? And I thought it myself, and just scrolling through that list, I found a lot of subdomains that could potentially be used by a fraudster or anyone else out there to use me as an entry to get their spam delivered. And that was a kind of eye opener. I mean, you know, we only think I've got one or two domains that I'm sending my emails from. That's right. But I do have a lot of other services based on domains or subdomains that could be used as an as an, as a sending uh, domain. And that was the entry point where I said, okay, I don't want anyone to send through my domains, misuse my name to get their spam out there. And that's uh, just, just to add to it. Yeah, because we had a good talk, uh, Sebastian, and, and, and I'm a very open person, but I'm also very critical. Uh, and and you, you experienced that, Sebastian. Uh, that's why I uh, <laughs> called you out. I I, uh, I say when when you represent some sort of security, and and as a consultant, uh, you 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 get approached from companies that need helps in areas like this. You need to be upfront with that, and I'm very aggressive on on speakers like myself right now, like Al, like like Sebastian. I'm aggressive over that if they emphasize some sort of security when it comes to IT the least they can do is protect their own domains. And I'm not saying we are 100% covered. DMARC is just one tool to help yourself. It's, it's, it's a lot more complicated, but we do not in this session at least, will we'll not try to make it complicated. It gets complicated by itself. Right. What I said was to, to, to Sebastian was that, that, that these subdomains, you can you can uh, you can make them so they are not at, they are at least so difficult to misuse as even possible. And and That's that discussion was trigger for you. And and um, so it's not the main domain I'm so worried about. Of course I'm worried about that because that's out there. Everybody knows that. So so it, it was more all the small stuff that we guys that have a busy day tend to forget a little about right where those those and then that's where where i come into the picture the, the 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 chart he showed us there are three uh modes if you will uh to demark and that's actually pretty important and that's where i caught okay sorry just we, we come to that in a second sorry i don't, don't want to interrupt you um <laughs> because I, I we we do have a second poll prepared but before that l <laughs> Um, when did you set up DMARC the first time for your brands and sending domain or for, for your 
for your website, for your blog, I mean, you're running a spam resource. I guess you protect it as well. When did you start with that? Oh my gosh, um, quite a long time ago, right? I was a little bit bleeding edge about it, right? I mean, we're talking, when was the DMARC spec sort of five. properly finalized? 2015 oh. was when it's, yeah, yeah, 2005 for, for, for originally, but it's one of those things where very few people implemented it for so long. So it's probably later, probably in the early 2010s was when I first got around to it. The yeah, problem I had too, yeah, yeah, I think the, the problem that I always had is just getting people to care. And that's because when I'm dealing with people helping them with deliverability problems, I'm, I'm primarily talking to marketers instead of security people. And there's this sort of cross uh, knowledge gap, cross team knowledge gap that people need to get better at to understand that, um, DMARC is a necessity and it impacts the marketing side of the organization as well. Think of how bad it looks for a brand if somebody's able to spoof their messages as them. You know, it's an, it's, it should be, and it is a no brainer for somebody like Lego Group. When you get into somebody who's a much smaller company, especially if they're not a direct to consumer brand, they don't necessarily understand that every domain gets spoofed someday. Every domain shows up in spam someday. Every company will get fished someday. Do you want to be put in a position where you could be a very small company and have maybe 18 to 30 employees and no significant email details, but if somebody knows that you have money, they're going to spear fish you and they're going to try to fake your own domain to try to talk to your own accounts receivable people to try to redirect where direct payments are going. So so right. for me, that's like, it, it's, it's an interesting uh, double-edged problem where the, the the big companies move very slow, but because by their nature they're they're afraid to implement new te technologies. But at least they have security people that get it, and and, and they have started to get that understanding, and it's growing. But then I have the the little tiny customers that tend to be the the much smaller senders or single brand, single domain. Maybe they don't have a hundred subdomains, right? But they don't understand that they are going to get fished and spoofed. And like you said, Sebastian, it's all about do you want to be the last unlocked door in town? Exactly, to that point. Um, coming to that, to our second poll, Michael, would you love to start the second poll? And um, meanwhile, it runs. Um, I would, uh, that's, that's, that's a good point that you uh, made up there, um, L, is, um, I can't see you anymore. What is going on here? <laughs> Strange, the but anyway, but you're still there. Um, yes. There was one point that convinced me as well. Everyone out there is looking for solutions to influence deliverability. So I bet, Gal, L, this is the most common question you get asked. How can I influence my, um, my, my deliverability? How can I get better at it? Um, and um, the point is using DMARC. I do have a tool in my hand to influence how the mailbox provider is treating emails that are coming from my domain, but are not originally coming. So I can, with that protection feature, I can influence the treatment of my domains. And this is a very, very interesting part um, that convinced me to use it as well. So this is a kind of tool to say, hey, um, Gmail, I'm briefing you how to treat my domains. If there's anything strange and doesn't look like it's coming from me, block it because it's coming from a fraudster. And uh, I don't know if the uh, poll was already running. Um, that is I the, see, the I question. See the I see the results as well. I don't know why I can't see you guys anymore. That is strange. No, no, no. I don't see you guys either. But it. But the poll is I think when quick poll goes away, I think the pictures come yeah. back, the video comes back. Yeah. Right. Okay. So um, that was exactly the, the, the question. So do you consider yourself as an important brand in terms of size? And 54% say yes. Some say no, or some hope not. And that's exactly the fraudsters gap they are looking for. You don't consider yourself important, but you are a player in that whole internet world. And they are looking for that unlocked door and they will find you at any time. And exactly to that point, um, around that and around your experience, um, let's talk a little bit about, you, you already mentioned it a little bit, uh, L, 
how to sell the DMARC effort to, yeah, your CEO, your CMO, whatever it needs. So you as a consultant, how, what is your arguments? What are your points? You already mentioned it slightly to those folks who say, okay, I need to have manpower. I need to have maybe a tool at some point that is costs. What is the return on that? So what is your argument around that? So first, let's start with the bad argument. We'll do the bad argument first. And the bad argument is <laughs> DMARC, people will say, hey, I implemented DMARC. My mail's not going to the inbox. What did I do wrong? You told me this would fix it. That's not what DMARC does. It's the same with SPF, uh, uh, Center Policy Framework Authentication, DKIM uh, Authentication. Um, they do not, none of these guarantee inbox placement. On the flip right. side, though, they help protect you. And if you have everything in place properly, overall, you're probably more likely to get to the inbox. It's a little hand wavy because it can, it can also mean that you are more likely to follow best practices, right? So it doesn't always mean the technology is the, the switch, but the technology is indicated that you're smart and you're paying attention. So right. uh, when people say, does DMARC help deliverability? Because they, they come to me and say, they want to know what's going to help with deliverability. And I say, yes, but it is not as simple as you implement DMARC and you suddenly get to the inbox. What is right? Well, the, the, the selling argument for that is you're keeping bad guys from spoofing your domain. That is ultimately what you're doing. You're making it very nearly impossible for somebody to successfully send significant amounts of mail pretending to be you. Because if you publish a strong DMARC policy, you're telling Gmail, Yahoo, um, Comcast, um, Hotmail, I think Office 365 is just moving to, to actually respect and block based on this. So you're telling all of these internet service providers to either quarantine or outright block mail that pretends to be from you when it's not really from you. That is both significant to protect your brand and it has a dotted line connection to deliverability success. The reason being there that if somebody else can pretend to be you and send a whole bunch of garbage on your domain, they can harm your domain reputation. You don't want other people out there sending so much spam that you end up on the spam house domain block list because of mail that you had no control over and nothing to do with. So that's, but that's kind of a complicated answer, right? Because DMARC does not magically get mail delivered to the inbox, but it is a necessary step to protect your brand, your domain, and that overall ties into deliverability success. Exactly to that point. It is very easy to burn reputation, and a spammer burns your reputation with a finger snip, but to recover from that takes you ages. Um, or you need to completely renew your sending infrastructure like IPs or NN domains. Karsten, I bet you had that discussion internally with Lego as well, because exactly to that point, what is what have been your arguments or how did you sell it internally to Lego? Well, yeah, as I said, uh, they already had it implemented when I came here. And uh, the, the, the difference being uh, when I came into to Lego, they changed the whole structure around email security. So they needed a guy like me that has uh, the level of knowledge on handling the situation that Al just mentioned. Because um, as I said, to, to start out with, it's actually pretty neat and easy to implement, but things have, uh, have the tendency to be complicated the larger and the more complicated your infrastructure is. And that's where me and my, my, uh, uh, my uh, very good friends, as I call them, I work together with um, our vendor, we, we, we try to unfilter this uh, complications. Um, so I actually say, when I look at the, the poll, uh, I'll turn around, I'll do another way of emphasizing it to, to the payment in, in my company. In my former company, where I was in the banking business, we had 15 banks that we provided IT services for. And I had, I had these complications. I, I was on a seminar way, way, way back. I think it was 13, 15, when I uh, discovered DMARC and all the good part about this. And to my, I had the same passion for, for protecting my, my company or companies as it was in the banking business. So I had to sell this idea 
what I said told them told them to start out with, it's not the the tool that is costing anything. It's actually free. It's the tool that helps you understand the reports. And that is one of the main, I think, very important parts of DMARC is you get a report every every 24 hours from the, the, the whole world that is in on this community. Those reports are not, and Sebastian knows all about that, they are not easy readable. It's a bunch of it's a bunch of gibberish in an XML file. That is that but is absolutely correct. <laughs> to to uh, coming to coming to that point a little later. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that is hundred percent correct. I'm currently just collecting them into an inbox. I didn't yeah. make it happen to 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 manage them. But before that, um, what you've mentioned, um, and that's a question to you again, Carsten. Um, before that technical setup and um, before that that that, yeah. that data that you receive that you need to manage, there is homework, and I figured out to me this is the most challenging part. Yeah. Um, what is the homework that needs to be done before we even start with a pure technical setup with a single coding for the TXT record? For, for me, it was uh, and still is gathering information especially from the marketing departments on what do we know that we own when it comes to domains? What are they utilized for? Uh, uh, what DNS providers are we using? Are we using more than one? Are we using more than 10? And uh, that is one, do we have a uh, department that takes care of DNS? Uh, as as a guy that that does not work that much in the DNS, I do know some uh, records that I need for DMARC to work. But then I have to have my skills as a uh, good colleague on the level because they don't see that as very important. Maybe so. What do we have a knowledge on around the DNS de deal? And 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 what I'm saying here is what we have already because there's a lot of unknown out there and, and al can speak uh, ages of this because he has that same experience just from a lot uh, more uh, a wider range of, of companies than i have for my two companies i've been in that's a good segue so, because i would love to this, ask this, al as this, well how do yeah yeah sorry uh, go sorry uh, how do you uh, how do you approach your clients your consulting clients when you start with bimmy uh with with dmark and maybe with BAMI as well, um, how do you treat them to do your their homework? How do you start with that stuff before even the technical setup starts? Uh, very similarly to what Karsten does, because um, it's all about trying to identify what you know and then getting prepared to be able to identify what you don't know. Because like Karsten says, there will be some companies will have a very good and aggressive marketing person who, who has purchased extra domains that you didn't know about. You will have somebody in the HR department who uses an outsource uh, company to uh, collect resumes and send send responses to resumes for you using your domain, using an outsource service. Does that set up for DCAM? Is it in the SPF record? Does it use a subdomain? Does it use the top level domain? So, it, or you know, how have you implemented Mailchimp or Klaviyo or Salesforce Marketing Cloud, any of these platforms that have their own specific domain settings that you, you you plug in an email address and what do they do to verify and validate and authenticate that domain the whole way down. And so for me, it's having that discussion specifically with that warning, like like Carson said, it's very, very similar process from my perspective. Then it's setting up uh, DMARC with none as the policy, just so you can start to see what rolls in and where it's coming from. That's the tricky thing, and then so you get an, if you if you use a dashboard like in you know if you use a tool that's parsing the XML like our Kickbox DMARC dashboard does, you know it it'll give you a list of, for example, source IPs. So for me, the, my top ten source IP list is the greatest way to look and go. Okay, that's my hosted VPS. That's Google for Business. Um, that's Mailchimp, and I don't know what the heck that is. I'm not in Poland, so that's probably somebody pretending to be me. Um, and that's the kind of stuff I go through for the client. So for me, it's all about right have that discussion turn it on just for monitoring, let some data come in and then try to categorize that data. 
Now, the last thing I'll say there is DMARC data, like you guys said, it is a big ball of mess. And so it is very complex, even if you parse it. After parsing it, it is still big and messy. So forget about the whole screen, just pick the, the few things to focus on, your focus area of the top few places where you see mail coming through as you, the top few places where you see mail failing SPF, the top few places where you see mail failing DKIM alignment, for example. Just kind of focus it in a little bits and work your way through. Right. Um, we'll come to that in a second because I would love to get to know a little more about that. Um, I, I would love to make one interesting experience I came across is when we talk about DMARC setup and the domains that we are in use, we automatically only think about our email domains. And um, but and I'm going to share my screen again um, with uh, the the audience. I hope you can see that that screen. Um, in that list of domains, there are only three domains I'm using for email. And everyone is just thinking about those three. Yeah, sure, I need to protect them. But with, with the others, I don't want anybody to send any single email from datahub.certifiedsenders.org. So, and if I don't think about them in my DMARC setup, and I don't set any policy, and thanks to Carsten, here I've done, I don't allow anything to be sent from that subdomain that is also part of DMARC. So I need to get to know all my domains, any microsite, any block site, anything that's out there that even doesn't relate to email, but I need to make it, I needed to make a decision. Okay, I do have all of them and I only want my three domains being able to be used for email sending. And that was my major learning. And I, I bet when you talk to marketing departments, they don't even think about their microsites or, um, I don't know, marketing actions, that, marketing campaigns that they just did for four weeks. They created a single subdomain just for that campaign and forgot about it. But this campaign will be picked up and used by a spammer to, to misuse your brand. And this was one major learning, and this is an important homework. But afterwards, I sat there, and you're 100% correct. Um, at some point, we need to define some policy. And there are loads of tools out there that are very helpful, providing wizards. Um, our sponsor, uh, Demartian, uh, does that. Demark Advisor, Easy Demark. The colleagues from Valley Mail, Redzip, UL with Kickbox. Um, all of them provide guidelines, tools. So you do not even know to, uh, need to have technical knowledge of syntax or whatever, you put it into a wizard, your domain name, you tick some boxes and you've got the record out there and you can just uh, copy and paste it into a TXU record. What is the best approach, Karsten, to start with? You mentioned it already. I would love to, yeah, summarize it again. What is the best approach yeah. starting and developing it? I'll try to do something that's difficult for me to keep it short. Um, <laughs> start with, as Al mentioned, the 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 main domains um i just want to make a side note on this because you gather information as we said we start out with none and that's the the policy i would say start out with that and i emphasize it for, for sebastian he, he he did it different <laughs> but anyhow <laughs> <laughs> you gather information in the time where you are waiting and it is frustrating just to sit and wait because you we are used to a PowerShell command you execute it and seconds later it's done but that's not how this works uh, uh, there need to be sent mail through that domain somebody that re create reports needs to receive those mails and then they will send reports and that just takes time mm -hmm. during that time befriend yourself with with DNS dudes or get a note so you can add and uh, change records. Um, and to decision makers, if you are not one yourself, that uh, because somebody has to make decisions. Because when you get information, and Sebastian pro can probably also tell that, you will discover, okay, we have a service out here hosted by so and so sending mail in our name. You 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 will realize that. Do we want them to? That's where the decision makers come into play. Do
do we want to reduce? And that was one of the main things that I worked very hard on with the banks was that the domain that they punch in when they go into their net banking, that's the domain they know. They expect the mail from that domain, cover that, but also utilize it for mail sending domains and reduce it as much as you can. So that's the next step. You need to have the backing of your management to do this because that will be the next step in this process is discovering what is actually sending mail. Do we want to continue that? And what's the next step in that? So decision makers, if you're not the one that can make those decisions, you need to prevent them too. Because the start, it starts out with uh, getting reports. And we usually say, use three months to a half a year on none, gathering in, uh, reports. If you discover fraudulence, and then, then that's where there are three levels, because as I mentioned, Google is utilized for a lot of phones. So a lot of people actually put up forwarders. Forwarders is something that is can destroy a lot of this security. But it, it's, it's a way to handle that too. And uh, that just takes time. And these reports that I'm talking about all the time are, uh, with the different tools, will showcase that for you, where your mails are getting forwarded and will break some of these records after being forwarded. You need to be able to handle that. So that's the DNS guys. That's where you and, and some changes in the DNS and the SPF records, you need to have be able to make those. That's where I say befriend yourself with the DNS dudes or be one yourself. Uh, and then the, the, the last part of it is, okay, when you have discovered stuff and you found out, okay, we only want those senders to be sending mail from us, go to a, the second level after that. So none is the most important level to start out with because you gain knowledge. And, and, and you take action when you found out, okay, we found a, a domain here is actually sending a lot of mails. How do we handle that? And before you change from none to quarantine or later on uh, to reject, you need to understand what's going on. And that's where I think it's important, especially when we mention smaller companies. You're in play here. Smaller companies, you can react faster because you probably have a lot better overview of what you want and what is actually happening um, than the bigger companies like mine. Um, I, just to give you a figure, we own close to 10,000 domains. We have 1,800 services hosted outside of Lincoln. 300 of those sent mails. So you can you can imagine <laughs> that I have enough to do. <laughs> and, and and that's that's not to things get complicated by themselves. You don't have to look for it. It just happens. So the smaller companies, because of this easiness that I'm trying to explain to you is your smaller company, you may, may not have more than one or five to 10 domains, subdomains included, to handle that and reduce the area of attack zones. Let's, let's put it that way for, 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 for the outsiders. And that's what you use none for. You gather reports. And then that is exactly react. the... That is exactly the main reason um, why I've I've chosen a different approach like you've done um, because I, I do have only the few and and that's a recommendation I can I I would give to everyone out there who owns just a tiny or a small brand you may have a much better overview than you with your tens of thousands of domains um, I was pretty clear even though. I scroll to my list of domains. I'm pretty clear, okay, those dom this is the domain used for email. This is a domain used for a web service, for an internal one, for an external one, whatever. So I'm pretty clear in my expectations. So I didn't start, I didn't even start with none because I was pretty crystal clear that Data Hub will never ever send any email. And my system mailings that I send out to my clients, 
no one else should, is allowed to send to that domain. So I can start right away with reject because I also, um, I, I'm also sure that my, um, my, my setup is correct. Um, so that was exactly the difference I figured out. And funny thing, even though I do not have a tool in place yet to read the data, I was just curious, looked into the XML files the other day into the aggregated report, and I figured out that our DKIM was broken or didn't even exist on one of our service domains. What happened? We introduced a new server. That server is allowed to send system mails as well. And what we, what we just didn't do, enable DKIM. And only by that report, I figured out, okay, my authentication is broken. So another learning for me, if I would be a small brand, I would use DMARC to kind of cross-checking my ESP settings. I mean, ESPs are adding up IPs, new servers, because they are providing, they want to provide much more performance, but somehow, I mean, it's always men that do the work, right? And a mistake can be done everywhere. And the more data I have to be able to prove that everything's right, helps me to get my email stuff better. And that was one learning. And I could reach out to my ESP, hey, or I reached out to my, my, my tech guy and say, hey, we need to enable DKIM would be better for our sending domain, only SPF is working. So that was one major learning. Um, L, anything to add there? We've got just a few minutes left, but anything to add to what Karsten uh, said in terms of setting up and the, and the approach? Yeah, it's, uh, don't forget the basics of authentication. Maybe it ties more to what you just said, Sebastian. Um, even it happens even to me. We were joking before about how even the experts step on their own foot, right? Um, I, I started seeing uh, unexpected bounces at Apple, and so I talked to my friend at Apple, saying, "Oh, it must be a false positive. It can't be legitimate." And it was kind of a mix. It was partly false positive, but partly also my error, where I had restored an old server. I didn't update the DKIM config, so suddenly messages were not signing with DKIM. Most of the time, SPF is good enough to cover for that. Carson, you touched on how uh, mail forwarding is one example of where that falls through the cracks. But at the same time, uh, Apple was having a DNS resolution issue where they couldn't see my SPF record. Through no fault of my phone of my own, and I don't host my own DNS, My uh, one of my providers does, and so, Apple was having some random connectivity problem or the ISP was. And so I started getting bounces out of nowhere when I thought I had fully set up best practices and I hadn't. So if I did actually have DKIM up and working, that little bit of SPF glitch wouldn't matter. So to me, that highlights why it's important to implement both as much as possible, do all of the different authentication steps along the way, make sure everything is aligned you know, meaning domains or subdomains match for the DKIM signature, for the SPF return path domain, all that stuff is very much, it can seem like uh, over engineered, it can seem like belt and suspenders, but it is very important because there are legitimate things that will happen that go wrong with the internet all the time, whether you do something wrong or somebody else does something wrong or nobody does anything wrong. So the more things you implement, the more better you are covered for every edge case and possible issue like that like it, it just it was it was i i could do nothing but laugh at it and go oh if i looked at my own headers like i just sent my friend at apple i would have seen there's no more dkim signature duh and 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 i think to emphasize uh, it, it, it's it's not uh there are no secrets that's why uh, i was uh, i was pretty relaxed when when sebastian showed his setup all these things that you looked at, guys, it's it's public. It's in the DNSs. So with a command prompt, you can get all this information. So there's no secrets. We will, when we implement DMARC, be part of a community. And uh, you can, if you feel for it, and I, I would emphasize for that, if you feel for it, send reports. Set up your DMARC so you also help provide reports it's 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 not that difficult and it's there are no secrets in it all of the things the, the the actual mail will not be anything it's only what's public available anyhow that is right. in these reports so uh, and in the dns itself where we specify all these records it's also available so there are no secrets hidden in there you may have to know a certain command to to fish it out, but that's that's about it. 
and and you can be very sure the ones that want to do us harm they know all these commands and they know pretty well what uh, what they are so exactly yeah exactly to yeah. exactly to the exactly to that point as it's publicly available the spammers can easily figure out okay there's an unprotected rent yeah. And now if they see all those TXT records with a dedicated DMARC set up and all that kind of stuff, they see, okay, no, uh, they flag yeah. up that they are against me. So that in itself is already a sign, okay, there's someone taking care of his stuff, right? Yeah. Did his homework. So that's a good point. I would, in, in the matter of time, it is a shame that we only have 60 minutes, guys. Um, the last question, the most important question, uh, 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 a, a very common question. We talked about ROI already. ROI is always related to costs. So I figured out and, 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 and experienced myself, and I think we agree on it, DMARC doesn't cost anything in its setup. So far, I just had a wizard free on the internet. I do have access to my DNS stuff myself, or I'd le I at least would have known someone who can manage my DNS, and that's all done. The costs occur when it comes to read out the data and um, to interpret the data. There are many tools out there. Um, what would you be, we don't have any price lists there, but um, just in, in one or two minutes, what would you recommend for smaller businesses to start with? What is realistic, what to spend on it and how to make real use of that data? Carsten, you mentioned it one day, you said make the data driven decisions um yeah. so is there's value in it um but what about the cost what what is something that we need to be aware of um when it comes to cost well it is actually it depends on 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 uh, the level of of domains that will be covered by this company because usually they they have a tool where you add a certain amount of domains and then you pay for that some may May, 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 how many of those are covered. So the price will rise as more domains are added to the list. Right. Others may, may take the price on, uh, I don't know, uh, how many mails are sent uh, or received, how many reporters. So it differentiates. I think, um, and, and that's where I lack information. I had two, uh, two providers in my two different companies where I was employed. Um, so my area of experience of what should it cost is, is, is lacking. Um, right. What I considered was how easy it was it for me to get to work. That right. was the main reason for me because at the end of the day, in the two companies where I was employed, I had the responsibilities. I got yelled at if something was not uh, working correctly right so i also demanded to be able to make at least 60 percent of the decision when i had to pick a vendor to help me out and then right. it's up to you as a tech guy that uh, how, how how easy uh, every day do you want because a lot of tools out there do a lot of stuff for you um do you have a boss who likes these as i call them graph cakes with a lot of colors, you know, right? Uh, round things with a different colors to, to, uh, to, to showcase to their leaderboard. Uh, then you need a tool that can provide stuff like that, an API for that, or at least a tool that can provide that. Um, others uh, go more into uh, details, give you a lot of information on the, in, uh, coming from those reports and helping you out, dig down to where did that mail actually stem from? How, how can I, how can I uh, um, help yourself fix uh, certain things? Like just Al just explained, uh, how easy it is it for you to to get down to? Oh, here is the uh, the, the right. reason for this not happening correct. And I I must say, I must say it's a jungle out there, but it's also um, usually they give you a trial period. And, right, and that's, I, I utilize that. Utilize in, that uh, because in terms it, of, it will showcase very fast to you. I like this. I do not like this, or I love this. 
it's 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 up to you as an individual. That's a good point. In matter of times, we are already two minutes behind after six. I would I would love to continue that, but uh, I think we can't. Um, that's what I definitely recommend. There are trial periods. I've used them by myself as well. You may get in contact with a salesperson and then you can ask the question about the costs. Um, and um, I would love to invite everyone and you, uh, Carsten and L as well. The second part of my personal journey is still open. So my data is still not used and I don't know anything about observations that the, the data will provide to us. And uh, thanks for that talk to you guys so far for today. Um, I would love to continue that journey with you at another date in time, continuing that discussion. And uh, I had fun. No coffee left. Maike, do you still have stuff for us? <laughs> no, <laughs> we don't have any questions so far. But um, first of all, thank you, Elle, and thank you, Carsten. And of course, thank you, Sebastian, for, uh, for the time today and sharing your knowledge with us. And um, maybe the attendees have questions the next day. Just contact us or L or Carsten directly via LinkedIn or I don't know, just contact them or us. And yeah, thank you again. And um, check out our website for the next webinars and our blog post. Sebastian men mentioned um, his blo blog post. It's on our blog. And I know that L has also a blog with a lot of knowledge about everything you need to know, DMARC, BB and everything else. And yeah. Thank you again. I'm also bookmarked in my bookmarks as well, yeah? <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> so, thank you and have a nice day and hopefully see you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.